good morning my dear students in a stretch of lectures namely the application of plants and animals for the human welfare we have been studying how best the plants and animals could be used for the human welfare now one aspect of that is what is called as abuse of drugs <coughs> So what do you mean by the term abuse of drugs? Now I want to make it very clear the meaning for the word drug here. Now the word drug is used in many senses. <clears throat> for example, the medicines are also called only as a drug. Drugist, if we just refer the dictionary, the little the pharmacological preservatives, the pharmacological medicines. those who are uh, storing they are called a drugist okay so drug refers to the medicines also now in this circumstances in the lecture that i am going to give the word drug is used in a different sense here i refer to the word drug only to what is called as alcoholic alcoholic drugs only to that i am referring to or what is called as any intoxicating drugs alcoholic or intoxicating drug only i am referring to in this lecture now this abuse people abuse their alcohol and their related uh, materials and uh, as a result of it what happens their health gets completely totally spoiled so these alcoholic drugs from where they are derived how they are utilized by the people is what we are going to learn in this class <coughs> now these uh, drugs are derived from two sources some of them are derived from the higher plants and some from the lower plants namely fungi so these are drugs are derived from higher plants as well as from the lower plants under the lower plants category fungi is a main source okay so from the higher plants i told these are drugs are derived and we have classified these are drugs into three groups namely opioids cannabinoids cocoa alkaloids etc <coughs> now the increased abuse of drugs and alcohol leads to harmful effects in youth the drugs commonly obtained from the flowering plants and abused are one <coughs> opioids two cannabinoids and three cocoa alkaloids as i already told you some of the drugs are also derived from fungi so first we are going to discuss one after another in this order and then we will go to this <coughs> first one is opioids heroin is the opioid and is commonly called as smack it is obtained by acetylation of morphine it is extracted from latex of a poppy fruit what is called as a papaya somniferum papaya somniferum <coughs> now the plant belongs to the family the papaverezi it belongs to the family the papaverezi it belongs to the family papaverezi and uh, you know the word somniferum is the species name it comes from the basic word called somna somna means to sleep somna means sleep so the word somniferum comes from that now after consuming this drug people feel a bit of a sleepy mood that is why it is called as a somniferum now the plant is popularly called in the local language as kasakasa it is the seeds of this fruit we are using for our culinary purposes in our kitchen 
in the name of what is called as kasaksa. Okay, the seeds are so small and they are white in nature, white in color. They are very small seeds. Now, this is chemically a D diacetyl morphine, which is a white, odorless, bitter, crystalline compound. This is taken by snorting and injection. Heroin is a depressant and slows down body functions. This binds to specific receptors present in our central nervous system popularly called as CNS <coughs> and gastrointestinal tract. Morphine is a very effective sed sedative and it is a very good painkiller. It is much useful in patients undergoing surgery. So it is in this uh, I mean, uh, beneficial aspect these uh, uh, drugs were invented but of course now we see that they are being misused by or abused by the people. See? It is used in the patients who are undergoing surgery. So this is the beneficial aspect of the morphine. Now this uh, papaver somniferum is including three <coughs> alkaloids namely morphine, morphine, codine, codine and papaverine, papaverine. Of this, the codeine is a bit dangerous and the morphine is also, morphine is a habit forming. Once the drug is taken, you always get a feeling that the next day also or very often you should take it. Otherwise, you feel highly uncomfortable if you don't get it. So, it, it becomes a habit forming. Now, some of these drugs are being used in cough syrups to bring a soothing effect for the throat. That is why the doctors very often they tell that even this cough drug, cough syrup should not be taken continuously over a long period because sometimes it may form a habit and a day will come when you will not get any sleep without your cough syrup. So it forms a habit. So even as a even as a um, I mean pharmaceutical drug, even as a medicinal drug, it should be taken only for a limited period. Otherwise, it becomes dangerous. So heroin is the most uh, alkaloid substance which is present here. It is called as a smack in the local language. I gave you the etiology or the meaning of the word papaver somniferum and it is what are all the symptoms of what, what it affects. It is a depressant. It takes you to a depressive mood and it slows down the body function. It slows down the body function. <clears throat> and then specific receptors, it binds to a specific receptors and it is affecting the central nervous system and the gastrointestinal tract. So these are all some of the dangerous aspects of the plant. Now this is the beautiful diagram of a papaver somnifera. It is in many colors. What I have displayed is only a white color. It is in red color and different colors. Many varieties, many species are there. Many species of a papaver somnifera and many varieties are there. Now this is the fruit of a papaver somnifera. It, it measures about uh, 3 to 4 inches in their size. It has got a very long stalk. <coughs> now what the people do, they make incisions uh, uh, like this. They make incisions like this or they make incisions as it is being shown in the other diagram. And then once you make incisions, uh, the milk will ooze out from this and then a small metallic sheet is kept here. A very small metallic sheet. And then the whole thing 
comes down and then it is uh, getting collected over here. The moment it is exposed to the air, it becomes a white crystalline substance and it is uh, taken, collected, <coughs> purified and then it is uh, coming to the market in different uh, brand names, white sugar, brown sugar and different brand names comes out. Okay. So this is how um, paper some from the heroin is uh, made as a uh, drug. Okay. See how when you make a, just a cut, the it comes out in the form of the latex. So it is a latex which you are using as a drug. The second one is cannabinoids. Yeah, group of chemicals which interact with the cannabinoid receptors are present principally in brain. So it is a directly attacking, attacking the central nervous system brain. Natural cannabinoids are obtained from the inflorescence of cannabinoids, cannabin, cannabis sativa, cannabis sativa, belonging to the family cannabinaceae, belonging to the family cannabinaceae. <coughs> Flower tops, leaves, presence of and resins. They are used in various combinations to produce marijuana, ashish, charas, and ganja. <coughs> so, different type of uh, uh, intoxicating drugs are produced. It goes by different brand names. When it is being prepared in different methods, you get a different products. Marijuana is a one, ashish is a two, then charas and ganja. Of this, the ganja is uh, very famous and uh, even co common people use the word ganja for everything. It is uh, generally taken by inhalation and oral ingestion. They are known for their effects on cardiovascular system. Cardio. Cardio means heart, you know. That. Okay. So, cannabinoids are uh, once again, they also produce a lot of intoxicating drugs. <coughs> this is the flower top of the inflorescence of cannabis sativa. The next group of alkaloid that we are going to discuss is called uh, cocoa alkaloids, which is uh, popularly called as a uh, uh, cocoa, which is uh, responsible for the protection of Coca-Cola, etc. And the substance or the drug which is uh, being taken from that is uh, called as a cocaine. Cocaine. It is obtained from cocoa plant. The name of the plant is Erythroxylum, Erythroxylum cocoa. <coughs> Erythroxylum cocoa, small c. Erythroxylum cocoa. It is any one, any of Four cultivated plants in the family Erythroxylaceae. It contains uh, four cultivated varieties are there, and anything goes by this common name cocaine. It is a native to the Western South America. It is a commonly called coke or crack. It is a commonly called as a coke or crack. It is usually snorted. It interferes with transport and neurotransmitter dopamine. It has a stimulating action on central nervous system, producing a sense of euphoria and increased energy. <coughs> Excessive dosage causes hallucinations. You know what is the meaning of the word hallucinations? Hallucinations means uh, you, feel, you, you get a feeling of uh, just uh, flying and going up. You are being elevated. As if you are flying, you get a feeling like that. And uh, you can't uh, feel exactly what is happening to you. And then uh, one, only the effect of uh, these drugs will go out of your body. You come to your uh, senses. Even if uh, somebody is uh, scolding you, beating you, or if you are just rolling on the road, nothing is known to you, nothing is known. And then you are, got, you are in a totally different area, different field. 
So that is what is called as an hallucination, hallucinations. So it is a producing an effect called hallucination. So it is a producer, it is a, uh, derived from erythrozylum cocoa uh, tree and uh, <coughs> yeah, the cocoa fruits are used for this uh, purpose for extracting. Cocoa is uh, known throughout the world for its uh, psychoactive alkaloid called cocaine. The alkaloid content of a cocoa leaves is relatively low. It is between 0.25 percentage to 0.77 percentage. The native people use it for their stimulant like a coffee or an energy source or both. Coca-Cola used cocoa leaf extract in its products from 19 sorry 1885 until about 1903. The extraction of a cocaine from cocoa requires several solvents and a chemical process known as an acid base extraction, which can fairly and easily extract the alkaloid from the plant. So, the extraction is a little bit uh, difficult. Extraction of a cocaine requires several solvents. It is not done with one solvent. And uh, it is uh, yeah, acidic and basic extraction method and then finally you get the alkaloid derived from that or removed from that then it is purified and then used as an intoxicating drug so this is the cocoa <coughs> this is the cocoa and then it is from this the cocaine is being extracted this is still a ripe and variety of cocoa Then, few more plants <coughs> which are very interesting and then they also use it as a drug. Atropa belladona, Atropa belladona and then Datura. These are well known plants with a hallucinogenic property. Just now we explained to you what is an hallucinogen. So, that is a, the adjective form, it is a, having the hallucinogenic property. So this is a datura plant, the flower top, I've got a bunch of flowers at it and then that is the fruit of datura, fruit of datura. Several plants, fruits and seeds having hallucinogenic properties are used in religious ceremonies and rituals for hundreds of years. Drugs like uh, Barbitures, amphetamines, benzodiazepines, LSD, popularly called as LSD, uh, form is a lysergic acid diethyl amides, and other similar drugs are normally used as a medicines to help patients to cope up with mental illness like depression and insomnia. They are often misused. You see. At this point I told you, first they found out these things only as a medicines for the patients to cope up with the mental illness or withstand the surgery or to overcome the depression. It is for this purpose it was a first used in the medical field but of course then it was misused by the people. Okay. The insomnia, insomnia means people who suffer without getting any sleep. I told you somna. Somna means to sleep. Insomnia means people they don't get to sleep in the night. So it's called an insomnia disease. So they are often uh, they are because they don't they are not able to sleep because of their depression, so many problems in the life. So people come across the problems in the life and then they become addicted to all these drugs. When these are taken for a purpose other than medicinal use or in amounts of frequency that impair zones of physical and physiological or psychological functions, it constitutes a drug abuse. So, this is the crux of this lecture, drug abuse. So, what is a drug abuse? I have now given you a beautiful definition. When any drug is consumed by people other than 
other than <coughs> medicinal use more than the amount or frequency that impairs one's physical physiological and psychological function if you are taking a drug it it is going to tell upon your physical structure physical health physiological there is a functioning of your body and if it is going to work on your mental level and if they are going to bring about a changes in your body at these three levels physical level physiological level and psychological level then definitely we are going to call it as a drug abuse so till the time it is not an abuse it is only a use you use that drug for different useful properties but at the same time if it is exceeding that limit then it becomes an abuse then tobacco <clears throat> it contains a numerous chemical substances including an alkaloid called nicotine which stimulates adrenal gland to release adrenaline and non adrenaline into blood circulation both raising blood pressure and increased heart rate smoking is associated with the incidence of <coughs> lung cancer gastric ulcer cancer cancer of urinary bladder and throat bronchitis coronary heart diseases popularly called as chd coronary heart diseases <clears throat> okay so these are all the five major diseases that you are getting because of inhaling tobacco so smoking is associated with the incidence of lung cancer gastric ulcer cancer of urinary bladder and throat bronchitis coronary heart diseases etc tobacco chewing is associated with increased use of oral cancer so oral cancer increase of a carbon monoxide in blood due to smoking reduces the concentration of a heme bound oxygen causing oxygen deficiency in our blood so when you are chewing tobacco by it increases the carbon monoxide in the blood as a result of that what happens in this carbon monoxide it reduces the concentration of hemoglobin which is a present hemoglobin bound oxygen it reduces it as a result of that what happens there is an oxygen deficiency in your blood oxygen deficiency takes place because the more the carbon monoxide that you are uh, taking is reducing the concentration of the hemo bound of heme bound oxygen okay so that is the problem of uh, taking the tobacco what are all the diseases caused by uh, smoking the tobacco or chewing the tobacco in whatever way you consume it it's a, it's a not a material it's not it doesn't matter when the tobacco goes inside it is a nicotine which is going inside whether uh, you take it in any form okay this nicotine is only i mean uh, damaging your body so you have to be very careful about that now in the even in, in my first slide i divided the whole the abuse of the drugs drugs are derived from two sources i told you the first one is from the higher plants higher plants the second one i have given fungi okay so these are two sources i gave in my first slide itself so that part is over now we have come to the second portion of our lecture so what are the drugs obtained from fungi <clears throat> now the first genus that i am taking is what is called as amanita the genus amanita contains about 600 species of agarics agarics is a group of what we call as agaricus genus name is agaricus 
genus name is agaricus agaric agaricus is a very broad category it is agaricus bisporus that we are using you know as a mushroom you prepare different type of dishes in your home today are called popularly called the mushroom so mushroom with the biryani mushroom with the egg and mushroom is now made into different forms it is a common so these are only called as agarics so agaric is a very big group but some groups of some plants are belonging to agarics called as amanids they are very dangerous very very dangerous to their health including some of the most toxic uh, known or mushrooms are found worldwide as well as some well regarded edible species this genus is responsible for approximately 95% of the <coughs> fatalities resulting from mushroom poisoning with a death cap amount accounting for about 50% on its own the most potent toxin present in these mushrooms are called alpha manitin alpha manitin and this amanitin comes from the word amanita amanita is the genus name so the <clears throat> a toxic substance which is a present is a called alpha amanitin so it is a coming under a broad category of groups called agarics and the genus name is agaricus but this genus name is amanita popularly called as mushrooms now amanita muscaria commonly known as the fly agaric or fly amanita is a basidiomycete mushroom one of many in the genus amanita it is also a muskimol mushroom native throughout the temperate and boreal regions of the northern hemisphere amanita muscaria has been initially introduced initially sorry i'm sorry Amanita muscaria has been unintentionally introduced to many countries in the southern hemisphere generally as a symbiont with the pine and pitch plantations and is now a true cosmopolitan species okay first it was unintentionally introduced as a symbiont with the pinus plant and now it is being misused by the people it is associated with a various uh, deciduous and coniferous trees deciduous and coniferous trees then next one is a uh, psilocybe psilocybe is a genus of guild mushrooms growing worldwide This genus is best known for the species with psychedelic properties psilocybin psilocin and biocystin they are the main psychedelic compounds responsible for the psychoactive effects of many species in the genus so what are the different compounds extracted from that <coughs> psilocybin Psilocin, biocystin. <clears throat> so these are the three compounds derived from the genus psilocybe. And these psilo, these are all popularly called as uh, psychedelic compounds. Psychedelic compounds because they are working at a mental level, at a psychic level. They don't do much work on your body. They work on your mental level. so these are compounds are called popularly called as a psychedelic compounds now this is uh, um, agaricus maga mushroom amanita and uh, this is the second one which i was uh, describe, describing to the to you psilocybe amanita and psilocybe now we are going to a very important aspect in my lecture a very important aspect what is this is adolescence and drug abuse now 
particularly this problem is too much in our younger generation not during our generation during our generation about 50 years back some people some old people they will become drug addict and then they become a regular drunkards or some people will drink drink very rarely not always once in a way once in, in occasionally very occasional so for occasional drinkers so that that used to be a people who are crossed the age of 50 but now the problem is too aggressive that these drugs are being used by the adolescent people so who are adolescents you know that the adolescence period is between 18 12 to 18 what we call as a teenage teenage group we call as a 13 to 18 19 teenage group now this teenage group is a very peculiar group they are called adolescents before the adult there is called that stage is called adolescence it is a stage where people are not able to determine which is right and which is wrong if it is if he is an adult a mature adult what he is doing wrong he knows if he is a child then he is being controlled by his parents but he is not a child to be controlled by the parents he is not an adult having his own maturity also so this is stage adolescent stage is a very peculiar very peculiar they think that they know everything but they don't know anything that is a problem with that group okay so this adolescent group they have become addicted to many drugs nowadays that is what are worrying the teachers and the parents very much nowadays see how these uh, drugs are being abused by the uh, children abused by the teenagers what's the reason for this how this could be over this could be overcome so these are all what i am going to narrate in few of the slides that are going to follow adolescence means a both a period and a process of during which a child becomes uh, mature in terms of his uh, or her attitudes and beliefs for effective participation in the society so he thinks that he should contribute something to the society he is a no more a child he is a no more a child he wants he wants a recognition from the society he thinks that he should be respected by all the people he thinks that he should be recognized by the peer group he thinks that he should be recognized by his parents so this attitude comes at the age of 12 to 18 he is not a child the period between 12 to 18 years of age may be thought of as an adolescence period in other words adolescence is a bridge or linking childhood and adulthood adolescence is accompanied by several biological and behavioral changes it is at this period the sex organs they grow to the maximum efficiency during both in the men and the women It, the sex organs it is uh, now getting ready for the sexual reproduction during the adult phase so it is at this stage it is uh, blooming it is uh, becoming um, to the maximum maturity stage okay so this adolescent stage is a very vulnerable stage adolescent thus is a very vulnerable phase of the mental and uh, psychological development of an individual now what is addiction i am going to define what is an addiction it is a psychological attachment to certain effects such as euphoria and a temporary feeling of a well being associated with the drugs and alcohol see beautiful uh, definition it is a feeling of well being associated you feel that you are you are good the moment you take a drug you feel that you are very fine you are good and you don't you don't have any worries all the worries you have forgotten it's only a feeling it's only a feeling just a feeling so you are feeling that you are very comfortable and then you get addicted for a drug these deny people to take them even when it is not needed or even when their use becomes self destructive so even when it is not needed and even if you know that it is a self destructive you consume it so that is what is called as addiction when repeated use of drugs and a tolerance level of the receptors present in our body increases 
Consequently, the receptors respond only to higher doses of drugs or alcohol leading to greater intake or addiction. However, it should be clearly borne in mind that the use of these drugs are very dangerous to our health. These drugs are very dangerous to our health. And particularly when you become addicted. Now, dependence. A beautiful concept in biology. What is the called a dependence? This, it is a tendency of the body to manifest a characteristic and unpleasant withdrawal syndrome if a regular dose of a drugs is abruptly discontinued. See, when you are a man or a woman or a boy or a girl become completely addicted. Now what happens uh, due to doctor's advice or due to the friend's advice? They abruptly discontinue the drug. Now what happens? It is also bad for the health. See, they will be, it is an unpleasant withdrawal of the syndrome. They will develop a syndrome. So it has to be withdrawn. They have to come out of this habit in a very slow and steady manner. So there are, there are, there are what, so many water known as ID addiction centers are there run by private agencies, government agencies like that. Once a man becomes addicted to the drug, now it becomes the responsibility of a government to de-addict him or to bring back him to the normal life. Because once he becomes addicted, his normal life will be lost. He, he won't be, uh, anymore he won't be a man, he won't be a human being. His behavior, everything will change and the people will not respect him. So, he has to see the de-addiction center and then you have to make him to become a man-human once again. So, in the de-addiction center what they do, they will try to withdraw their drugs very slowly, very slowly. So, de-addicting drugs are also given and abruptly if he is discontinuing, then that will lead to some of the problems. This is characterized by anxiety, shakiness nausea and sweating which may be relieved when use is resumed again. In some cases withdrawal symptoms can be severe and even life threatening and the person may need medical supervision. Dependence leads the patient to ignore all social norms in order to get sufficient funds to satiate his needs. See, he becomes, uh, uh, he is uh, ignoring all the social norms. He is becoming addicted, a drunkard. Nobody respects him. So he, he wants to withdraw himself from, himself from the society. He himself keeps aloof from the society. He develops a sort of inferiority complex. When he goes near the other people, then he thinks that the bad smell will come from him and the people will not like him. So he wants to withdraw from the society. He wants to keep away from his friends. He wants to keep away from his family members. He will be seen only in his peer group. He will be having some close friends who are also drunkards and he will be always seen only with them. And he will not mingle with other family members. So these are all some of the problems. This results in many social adjustment problems. So immediate adverse effects of drugs abuse are <coughs> reckless behavior and violence. So they become violent, so many times they become violent. Excess doses of the drugs lead to coma, respiratory failure, heart failure, Cerebral hemorrhage and even death in some cases. Some, some people they drink, drink, drink throughout the life and then finally they die. Even die at the, at the time of a death, they, they don't uh, reconcile, they don't uh, feel for what they have done. Because they have met with so many problems in the life and they think that the drug is the only solution for to get them out of it, out of the problems. So they become addicted and then finally they collapse themselves in the life. So, the excess dose of the drug leads to the coma, 
respiratory failure heart failure cerebral hemorrhage they will be having a very very pathetic death very pathetic death because all the organs will fail they will not be able to breathe they will not be able to see what is happening around them brain will fail heart will fail lungs will fail so organ one organ after another organal death will be there they will be having a very gruesome death these are drunkards so one has to be aware of all these things and people have to be what is an anaesa away from all these things the most common warning signs among youth include drop in academic performance you see once they become drug addicted their academic performance will go drop in academic performance unexplained absence from school lack of interest in personal hygiene withdrawal isolation depression fatigue etc aggressive rebellious behavior deteriorating relationships with the family and friends loss of interest in hobbies change in sleeping and eating habits i i, I believe that you know the meaning of all these words and you understand all these things i think you see so very sad affair and it becomes really it's a very painful for me to teach these things to you children because nowadays i find that this younger generation is a teenage group many of them have become addicted to their drugs see they will be having what is and they will be some lame excuse they will be giving when they absent themselves from the schools they will not even care for their personal hygiene they never care for their personal hygiene they will come with a unclean dress or torn away clothes they will come to the school they don't bother for their friends they uh, remain isolated they withdraw from their friends and uh, they have got aggressive and rebellious behavior they severe themselves they get away from their family relations friends etc they don't have any interest in the hobbies also so the whole life changes the whole life changes for them once they become drunkards long term effects of a drug addiction it could lead to heavy drinking in adult could see here in a, in a childhood in a adolescent stage if they start drinking in the adult world they become heavy drinking then damages the nervous system and the liver called cirrhosis and then if this is used during the pregnancy period during uh, by the women then it is affecting the fetus the next generation is affected the developing baby inside the womb it is getting spoiled okay so the use of drugs and alcohol during pregnancy is also having an adverse effect on the fetus the side effects of the use of uh, anabolic steroids in females in female what effects it is having first one is a masculinization they become more like men they lose all their fe- fe- female feminine characters they they become more mannish in nature more masculine in nature increase in aggressiveness increase in aggressiveness and then mood swings depression abnormal menstrual cycle then excess hair growth on the face and on the body enlargement of clitoris and then deepening of the voice all these are problems all these are problems that come because of the drug addiction when women take a drugs it is a, a leading to all these problems in may it includes acne increased aggressiveness mood swings depression reduction in the size of the testicles decreased sperm production kidney and liver dysfunction breast enlargement premature baldness enlargement of the prostate gland premature closure of the growth centers of the long bones this may result in the stunted growth so these are all some of the problems for the men when they become drug addicted acne acne small pebbles coming uh, in, uh, in the face 
increase the aggressiveness more more they get the different moods mood swings and depression reduction in the size of the testicles sperm production liver dysfunction and then breast enlargement for the men then premature baldness all dangerous problems all dangerous problems they get because of their drug addiction There is a old adage of a prevention is better than cure. Also true here also. See, well, prevention is always better than the cure. Once you become addicted, you can never come out of it. See, don't go near that. That's my best advice. Don't go near that. Once you go and then become addicted, it's a very, very difficult to come out of it. So prevention is better than cure. It holds good. That, is, that, that statement is best here only. Taking drug or alcohol are more likely to be taken up at a young stage, more during the adolescence. See, this problem starts only during the adolescence. It is not during the mature stage, adult stage. It starts only in the adolescence. And then it comes throughout the lifetime. Take remedial measures well in time. The parents and the teachers have a special responsibility for the children during this age at that time. Parenting that combines with the high levels of uh, nurturance and consistent discipline is uh, very important to bring the children without any drug addiction. Perhaps the last slide in this lecture, prevention and control. <clears throat> Some of the measures uh, mentioned here would be particularly useful for prevention and control. Avoid undue peer pressure. See, undue peer pressure. Be aware of what friends you are having, what peer group you are having, who are all your friends, what is their type, what is their nature, whether they are of the studious nature, whether they are drunkards, whether they are a free, easy-going type, what type of friends you are having, that one should be very clear. So it is the peer group, it is a peer group which is spoiling the children. So educate, education and counselling the drunkards. Oh, and then seek the help of the parents. Once they become drug addicted, they have to openly talk to their parents about their problem and then they have to take the help from the parents. Looking for the danger signs. See how dangerous it is to consume the drug they should, they, they should understand. Seeking professional and medical help if it is going beyond the limit. So these are all some of the things that are the uh, people should follow if the, if the drug addiction or the drug consumption goes beyond a particular limit. Good. Now, this uh, topic uh, is a very good topic. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I, I won't say that it is a purely a biological topic. Of course, the drugs are uh, derived from the parents, uh, from the plants and the fungi as I was telling you. But this is a more a uh, social problem. When in a family you see a drunkard, the male member is a drunkard, the, the whole family goes, will not be able to uh, show attention to his wife. If the children are left uncared, the children cannot be admitted in a good school because the man will be spending all his money only for drinking, only for purchasing the drugs, liquors. He becomes a liquor addict. He cannot show attention to their children. He has to withdraw from the society. All their relatives will not respect him. So this becomes a family problem. A family problem slowly becomes a social problem. Social problem becomes a national problem. So uh, I am really happy that I have discussed a social problem to the younger generation of uh, present day. And uh, I think they will be aware of this uh, problem and then they will be able to handle this uh, problem in a very beautiful way. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you my dear children. <laughs>